inside this filming, the life principles that I talked about, I came up with seven things that is really powerful for us as the congregation, as the people of God, as the body of Christ, as the church, the local church. I want to encourage you. I know many are afraid and they are reluctant, hesitant, all of those words, and even stronger for some about returning to assemble together, to gather together. I want to encourage you, whatever level your faith is, whether you have decided to gather again on site, you know, with the safety measures in place, or you have decided to stay safely in your home and watch from online, I believe God will honor this as well. So I'm not here to bash anyone or to correct anyone. Whatever level your faith is, I'm here to encourage you to reassemble. If it's online, assemble there faithfully. Every Sunday, every Wednesday night, whatever you attend, service you attend, that pastor is holding it out for you. And if they're not holding it out, pray for them. They may have experienced losses in their family as well. And if you decided to go on, on site, I put my faith right there with you. That you safely go with God to reassemble, to regather at the local church. And there are seven benefits, seven powers that you have already been receiving. And if you are new in the faith, perhaps you don't even know about benefits and the powers of attending church. Well, I'm here to tell you that there are some things that you won't find anywhere else. God has deemed it to be so. It's his system. It's his way that we assemble at church. The whole church is designed to help us get the victory there. The whole church, the whole local church, every pastor, every leader, every elder, every group leader, every Sunday school, every Bible class, every Sunday service, every Wednesday service, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever day you meet is designed to help you as a believer get the victory. So that's a part of what we miss if we don't gather. The whole church, I say, is designed to help us get the victory and keep the victory, to walk victoriously in Christ. That's what it's designed for. That's what God did. It's his way. So when he says, forsake, don't give up on assembling yourselves together, there's a reason he's saying that. There's a reason. And I've just listed seven of them <laughs> off to you as reason, uh, reasons that God is saying, don't give up on meeting together. Don't give up on gathering. Don't give up on assembling together in Christ. And I want to encourage the smaller congregations. Yes, smaller congregations. Even the smallest assembly. Jesus has put his stamp on it. He said, Matthew 19, 18, 20, If two or three gather together in my name, I shall be among them. So he has put his stamp on you. I don't care how many members you have or don't have. God has stamped you on. He stamped and put himself out there to be there. Uh, someone may have told you that you were boring. I don't care. He, that's not a part of the scripture. Only the exciting or um, dynamic or ch charismatic pastors, I'll be there. If you're boring, I'm not going to be there. No, he said, if two or three of you gather in my name, I will be there. So I want to encourage you. Don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel now. If you have to take it online, take it online. Keep going. The Spirit of God says this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And maybe it will be different even after it passes. But different is not always bad. Father God is often saying, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. So let him do his new thing. Amen. Let him do his new thing. And the final one I have is the power of community. I want to encourage you with all of the social media groups being so and communities being so popular these days. We know the power of community. For example, Facebook, you have all these friends and you don't know half of them. You don't even know half of them, <laughs> but they're on your um, 
Facebook, your social media as a contact, as a friend, as an associate, they are there. And it's because they have tapped into one of the greatest needs of humanity, of mankind, is the need to belong. One of our previous pastors used to say so well that Jesus didn't just die so that we could escape hell. He didn't just die so we could all go to heaven. He didn't just die so that we could all have victory here on earth. But he died also so that we could belong. So that we could belong to our Father. Reconnected to our Father. And it answers one of the needs that we have, we all have, on whatever level. The gangs have tapped into it. That's what they lure their, um, their brothers and sisters into that need to belong. They make them feel like family and any other group and sororities, the, um, the blue, the military, they all are accessing that need to belong. They become family. They become someone that you trust with your life. And so I'm, I'm not discounting any of that. But what I am encouraging you with is the community that God has designed for his people. And he loves being among his people his family. A part of my commission is you take care of my family, speaking of God, and I'll take care of yours. That's a part of our covenant. And for many of the ministers of God, it's a part of their covenant, whether they realize it or not. You take care of my family, my sheep, my flock. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, take care of my lambs. You know, it was a part of Peter's call and it's a part of God's way. You know, it's the reason that our social media, I'll say that again, our reason our social media is so popular in this day. They're speaking to that need to belong in all of us. So what's so special about God's community, you might ask? So glad you were wondering about that. The presence of God is one thing. You don't experience the presence of God resting and residing in our corporate praise anywhere else. Even if you are at a concert, a Christian concert, it's... um. It's there. God's presence is there. But it's not quite the specialness of him being in his own house. His own house. The worship in the church. When we assemble, you can't quite capture that anywhere else. In God's house is where you get that. In God's presence. The reason I mention that, one of the reasons I mention that is in God's presence, there is uh, the potential of miracles, revelations, insights, breakthroughs that you would not have anywhere else. Remember I mentioned that uh, when you're praying at alone at home, even if it's just your family, that element it's not quite the same as when we gather together as God's body, as his family, in his house. And let me encourage you, those of you that have uh, decided to um, stay home and assemble online, I have no condemnation for that. I want to encourage you that God honors it just the same. He honors it. I think it's better if we go, but if whatever your faith level is saying, you and God, that's what I encourage you to do. That's what I encourage you to do, to hear God for yourself. Amen. And you can do that. He speaks to his sheep. He leads us by his voice. And so I don't have to teach you about hearing the voice of your father. You can do that. You can do that. The smallest assembly Jesus promises to be there. So he's right there with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. So if you haven't plugged back in yet, if you haven't decided to gather again, do so. Do it now. Do it this Sunday. Do it this Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day of the week you meet. Do it this Sunday. I encourage you in the name of the Lord. Hey, thank you for listening. If you've been enjoying any of our content, be sure and like, share, and subscribe. You've been listening to the Grace Covenant Online program. And visit our sponsor at theparsonage.com for books, courses, printables, and leadership resources. Bye now.